Uh, no, nobody's seen her. A uh, he calls to another Zeke and Hell. He says, "Hey, you seen that lady lives up at that manor? No, ain't seen her. Sorry, she ain't here. Nobody's seen her. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I overheard uh, some conversations about uh, witch burning tonight." And uh, it seemed interesting, and I was interested in attending. Uh, do you know anything about that happening tonight? Yeah, uh, Jeb said we're gonna, he found a witch, we're gonna burn her a little bit past, uh, a little bit past when it gets dark. Oh, do you know where Jeb is right now? Uh, Jeb's probably at town, I think. And the witch, is she in town with him as well? I don't know. Oh. I don't oh, know Marcia. anything about a witch. Oh, is that the... sir, you just said that there's a witch burning going on and that Jeb has a witch. I mean, you clearly know there's a witch. Don't know who it is. Okay, I'll give you that. Now, do you know where Marsha is? Uh, she's at the church in town. All right, well... Thank you for your information. He said Jeb was in the town, and he doesn't know where the witch is, right? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, and you're pretty certain he wasn't lying. Well, I guess I'll go to town. I mean, can't really do anything else, so... All right, so you sort of leave, like everyone's sort of like staring at you as you leave. Um, you head back into town, and you see where like the Zeke and Hell barricade is. Uh, Jeb isn't there, but you know they said Marsha was in the in the church. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to the blacksmith see if uh, that sweet sweet Delilah is there. Uh, she is. Um, she smiles at you when she sees you. And... Ask her if uh, she's seen Jeb or any misc bask or a witch or any of those three things. Um, she said uh, Miss Bask left in the in the morning. Um, she saw her walk out of town, but she didn't see her again. And um, gosh, uh, he was in was in the center of town a little while ago. He met with Anton, and they went somewhere. She hasn't seen him come back since, and Marsha is still in the chapel. Okay. And uh, Pyre is pretty nice. much outside of it's... the chapel in the square, right? Yeah, and like you can see it from, from her shop. Like she watched the whole thing. All right. Um, I guess I'll mosey on over to the church. Or wait, I'll ask her, is Father Seneca in the church? Nope. All righty. Um, well. I'll come back later tonight, Delilah. And uh, I have to go now. So walk over to the church to meet Ms. Egan Hell. Uh, yeah, she is um, praying. And we'll get to what happens when you get inside there uh, in just a moment. Uh, Genevieve. Um, 
do you approach the the Hutfeld uh, barricade? What do you do? Um, I uh, simply get off uh, my horse and then I I walk up to the barricade and I and I look at the guards and be like, uh, "Is Eljo around?" Um. She's um, the, where the guard looks at you and goes, "Yeah, uh, she's around down by the water, not far. Go right over there." Uh, so I can I, can I go through, talk to her? Um, yeah, you go right ahead. All right, so I'm, I'm going to make my way over there. What is she doing? <laughs> uh, she's just sitting at the water with a, with a bottle, um, looking out. Uh, so Genevieve kind of like uh, stands in front of her and says, um, uh, "What do, does it look like? What she's drinking, or is, is this just like normal meat or something like that? I don't know. Can't tell. Okay. So, it definitely, uh, it, definitely, it doesn't look like a Basque meat bottle, right? Yeah. Uh, she looks at. Uh, uh, she looks at Elja and she says, um, mind if I have a swig? And uh, she says, she goes, ain't no honey in it, girl. Probably wouldn't like it. Uh, she's like, that's rather bold of you to say. Uh, don't think it is. Mm, I think it is. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Last I checked, you're one person. She takes another swig. And I got a whole bunch of people here. And you know what? I'm closer to any of those one people. And I got a blade. <laughs> I don't think you'd make it very far. This ain't sending gift baskets, girl. She smiles and she says, who says I need to get very far to get you in a vulnerable position? And her eyes kind of go to the water. As if to say, I'll throw you into the water and you'll go down with me. <laughs> so that's what she's insinuating right there. Um, sorry. Uh, she goes on. Yeah. I guess, but I doubt you'd want to try your luck. Still, wouldn't make it very far afterwards. And then she like she turns around and looks at you, and you you see her eyes fall on something for a minute in the distance. She, and then she looks back at you. I. Grab the bottle. Um, make a coordination check. All right. Let's see. Do a little something risky. Oh wow! Look at you. You got it. Um, yeah. Like, 
you run out, you grab the bottle before she even reacts, right? Like, so she is still eligible. So, like, as you put your hand in the bottle and you get it out, right? Like, her pistol comes out, but it's just so, like, it's just slow enough that, like, it's just like hand on the pistol and she takes it out of her her belt. Like, then, then obviously she rethinks the situation and sort of like puts it back kind of quickly. Um, um and then you're holding the bottle and she's standing there. And um, uh, as soon as you open it, you can smell, uh, you can smell the moonshine. Yeah. I take a sip. I take um, a sip. Gosh, take a toughness test. No, oh, no. not just for a second. I'm not going to take a whole swig. I just want to taste it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, yeah, just for just a sip, toughness test. No, um, it's, it, I don't know if you ever had moonshine in real life, but it burns yeah, going all yeah, the way down. Yeah, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you get that burn all the way down. Um, And I give her back the, uh, the bottle, and I says seems perfectly legal to me and then sits down next to her and she says in fact i think i can just decide that that's okay to have every once in a while alja because i actually kind of know what you've been up to just haven't had much of a proof to do it but I don't want to fight over the families over some stupid booze. So then what do you want to fight about? I don't want to fight with you at all. But I might need your help. Okay. What about so um, she says, uh, Zegan Heist plan to burn a witch tonight. I'm scared that witch is my mother. Do you, what? You want us to try and stop him? If it gets crazy, I might need some backup. In return, I'll... I'll pretend your organization doesn't exist. She uh, looks down and she says, okay, I think we can work something out. Um, and then we're going to fade the black on you sitting at the river with Elsa looking at Bogenhofen. Um, and we're going to go to Nash. Uh, riding his yak, which the mount now shows coming in. Um, God, I just I just blend in so well. <laughs> 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 so you're you're trying to keep a a, a safe distance um, from your target, and I think you're like kind of like in the riverbed. Nobody can really see you. Um, and then this child comes out from one of, from the village, one of the, just a child, the child is like, you know, a regular child from the village. And, uh, gosh, she says, wow, are you a Yeti, mister? That's racist. That's what? That's racist. I don't know what that word means, mister. Yeah, I got born that way. Um, so do you have any... Are you... Are you the... And what's that big fuzzy beast? It looks kind of like an ox, but fuzzier. Is that because yetis are fuzzy? What do you want, kids? I'm just wondering why the Yeti is in the village. Marsha said she'd burn the Yeti if she ever came to the village. And that old fat elf who mommy said would eat me if he ever caught me said, 
that the Yeti would eat all the children too, and they like children more than elves. So does that mean you're coming here to eat children, Mr. Yeti? Yeah. Here, eat all you kids. Get the hell away from me. Um, during this time, unfortunately, you lose Genevieve. Uh, you will only lose your target. And the child, like, is following you on the river, asking you questions. Um, what, what do you, <laughs> what, how do you change your plan now? I'm on a mount, I can just get away from this kid. Yeah, I, you have lost Genevieve, so, like, Go back to the manor, or like go. Unfortunately, this town is full of half breeds. This kid's half cheetah. You can't get away from him. Well, no, that's why I'm asking. Like, are you gonna full gallop, right? Like down the bank of the river. Well, here's the thing. It will make you more. Uh, here's like, the thing. More she's simple. following a road in a series of paths. I might not no, know no, where she... she's gone, but I can certainly follow. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna like head down the river. Well, I mean, because this. uh... This plantation, farmhouse, whatever, it's at the end of one road. So, even if I've lost sight of her here, she's either in the plantation, or she's back out on the road. So Well, you you were following her into town, right? So she's, like, gone into town, and you kind of lost her. Oh, well, you didn't mention at what point I lost her. I thought she was still yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, like, so you haven't seen, like, yeah, so you saw her going along the road, and then she went into town, and then the child came and is talking to you, and then I imagine you're kind of, like, following the riverbank, sort of, like, so you're, like, kind of dipped down a little bit, um, and the child is just walking on top of the riverbank next to you. But, like, you can obviously speed up um, and get away. No, I'm gonna use, uh, say what I said, I'm here to eat all you kids. Uh, intimidate. Oh, you are rolling intimidate. Uh, well, that's where I pull a fast one. I can substitute I charm for intimidate. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, this is a uh, normal test. This kid is not buying your bullshit uh, too much. Get out of here, kid. You're bothering me. Oh, shit. Hold on. I hit the wrong thing. Close that. Roll the right one. Um, yeah, so, like you say, you're gonna eat him, and the child screams, and she says, My mommy knows the town dragoon. I'm gonna go get her. Perfect. And, you do that. And, uh, she runs off into the town of the street. Um, I think, like, a little while later, you can see, um, uh, Genevieve talking to a, to a, a woman on the, on the bank. And you are well hidden when you see the child running across the bridge, right? Like in front of you. I don't know if you care or not, but um, yeah. So looking at um, Elja, like you and Elja are talking when you see uh, uh, the child of Hold on, I know this. Horse face. Uh, it is a it is an unmet character. James uh, Am man. Amelia Token. Uh, you remember your friend Amelia uh, the Token? Token this family. Is your, this is your young child. Uh, this is your young child. This is the Token kid. The Token kid. Um. <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't have a name yet. Children don't get names until they're a little bit older than she is. She's like maybe three or four. Um, she runs up to you and she says, uh, uh, Miss Miss Genevieve. Uh, yeah, so I, I turned to her and she says, yeah. There's a Yeti riding the Yeti coming into town. Says he's going to eat all the children. Uh, she's like, um, she's like, 
do I get an idea of who she's talking about? <laughs> but I don't know if I saw. I don't know if I saw his mount. Um, maybe I don't know. Oh yeah, here I I ask this to the kid. What did he look like? Um, well, he was big, and the yeti he was riding was really furry and fuzzy, like a yeti. Did he did he talk funny? Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> She's like, oh, go back to him and tell him to stop being mean. Children are not delicious. But Miss Genevieve, uh, Alexandre used to say the Yetis were going to eat all the kids and that they would eat all the kids before the elves ate all the kids. Uh, uh, she, she's like, I found out also, also Alexandre was just saying that because we kids are actually not very delicious. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Go tell him. Go tell him to be nice to you and um and and to not eat the children. <laughs> um, I think the the child fails her awareness test and can no longer find the yeti. So we may move on. <laughs> um. Uh. Let's see, Rutherford, you walk in the church. Mm -hmm. um, and you see uh, Marsha is there in the front pew praying. Is there anyone else in there? Um, no. I'm going to walk up to her and take a seat next to her, like a person's distance away, like two or three feet, I guess. Um, does she do anything or does she just keep praying? Uh, she keeps praying. She saw me. She rode up during the whole Jeb incident, right? And she saw me standing by the big puddle of blood, right? Yeah, but the, remember there was no Jeb when she yeah. came. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that. So I get what I say correct so it doesn't make, so it makes sense. Um. So, Ms. Ziegenhelt, I saw your son Jeb on the road today on the way to Basque Manor. Have you talked to him at all? Of course I talked to my own son, a damn fool question. Who are you? And she looks back at you and she says, oh, it's that Lord fellow. Well, of course I saw him, my lord. Mm. We passed by him, and he said that he caught a witch. And I was told by one of your clansmen back at your uh, farm that, uh, that he was in town right now. Do you know anything about who this witch is or where Jeb might have gone off to? Well, I don't know where my son went, but I sure do believe him when he said he got a witch. And I happen to know it's that woman who I've been saying is a witch my whole life. It's that, that Selma and her manner and her consortant 
with devils and demons surprises no one. You're right, I'm not surprised either. Crazy things happen there. Do you know where she is right now so I could go talk to her? No, of course not. Jeb is keeping the witch from us for safety. And since Father Seneca has disappeared last night because God was too much for him, I guess, we're going to have to... Uh, Jeb said he will do the service for the witch. He's probably off praying and purifying right now. I need to think real quick because this can go two different ways. Okay, I actually need a second. So, excuse me. Yeah, you really need Rasmussen around to tell you what. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't figure out what to exactly say. I want to say something so it appears that I'm on their side. Well, just remember that you're supposed to be pretending that you know what to do. You're right, I know everything. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Fake it oh, till you make great. it. There you go. Literally what the fop does best. Well, Marsha. I think I can do the service. I was raised as a... Uh... <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. First off, five corruption. <laughs> Impersonating a, a member of, of the clergy. Do you guys do not like that? Um, and make your guile test. Gosh, but make it, make it, actually make it routine. Make it routine. Oof. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fortune point. Okay. Okay. And she looks at it and she goes, Really? Well, having a trained member of the clergy is the proper way to do these things. Yeah. You've got your holy book with you? No, I lost it. They're in the scuffle at the Basque Manor. I lost it. Who was you scuffling with? Those demons from the forest that the Basques summoned. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. This is going to end awfully. So much corruption. <laughs> Do you have a spare one or? Do you think Father Seneca has a spare one? Yes, of course. Here, and she like hands you hands you one of her. Well, no, she points to the the thing she wouldn't have of the book. Uh, up there on the uh, near the altar, he's got one. Fuck! I uh, can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Can, can I ask you? Uh, I would you. Would you mind going to the witch now, or 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 or, or soon, and and doing the proper rites? <laughs> okay, 
Um, yes, that's no problem at all. I just need to go stop at the end and grab a couple things and be on my way as soon as I can. The better, the quicker this is done, the better. It's, you know, magic and witches are dangerous things. Yes, I always knew she was a witch. Always. Her and that daughter of hers, both witches. Filthy things. Do you? Right. Uh, yeah, and I think I think the gist of what she's going to tell you is that um, they are keeping her at Anton's mill. Okay. Well, I'm going to go stop by the inn, and then I will uh, go to Anton's. And okay, so are you sure that's what you want to do? Um, that's what I'm saying. I'm not doing that though. That's not what you're doing. Or if it is, it's fine. Just just let me know. Just think about the ramifications of going to Anton's. I'm not going to Anton's. I'm going to try and find Genevieve. <laughs> I have just made a big problem. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I think I think because Nero did have a lever, and I think we have um, a good stopping point because now obviously uh We've located the mother and the um, we've located the mother, we know where they are, and you even have an inn. So, I'm a priest, <laughs> there you go. yes, Father Lord Lutherford. <laughs> Titles bestow them upon me. Oh Why can you go ahead and read us a passage from that book? <laughs> <laughs> I just see him like making up shit. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, you'd have to have the knowledge that most lowborn can't read either, so either they're gonna have to remember the stuff that they've been told to recognize that you're bullshitting them, or you just make it up on the spot, and who the hell would they know, right? Yeah, they probably don't even know, right? <laughs> you can pick up anything. Just want to point out here, though, I'm literate. How are you not literate? <laughs> yeah, he, they're not literate. They don't read. I'm not yeah. literate because yeah, I'm he's a, a trash gutter rat. Yeah, lowborn, no education. Um, you're not literate. I mean, I'm a lowborn. For some reason, I'm very education. good at forgeries. I just see him like getting a book and just like flipping to any page and be like, um, this is what it says. <laughs> from this passage, from our great Sigma, no witch shall be left alive, permitted, they have not been cleansed by the church. I mean, yeah. He can freaks out, away. starts just naming items he can see. I oh, need a from silver the book coin. Of... I need the blood of a child, and I need prayers. Everyone, pray. Pray to our god, Sigmar. Lo, from the book of, of chair, say What the fuck is the book called, anyway? Pew. Um, I actually have it written down somewhere. It's, 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 it's mostly what you would assume. Um, it's just Book of the God Emperor, right? All right, I'm going to add that to my trappings. It's actually Father Seneca's book. Um. Oh gosh, no! Because here's a great end scene. Do you uh, do you open the book at any time? Like, do you open it just like flip through it? Just curious. Because when you pick it up, it does feel weird for a book, but you don't pick up any books. I do have my holy symbol on me, and when I walk past Tilda's, when she was doing her thing, it felt heavy. She was doing some real fucking weird shit. So, um, 
I'll just examine. I'll look at it and just carry it with me. Do you open the book? In hand. What was that? Did, did, uh, did Marsha hand me the book, or did I go pick it you up? You had to go pick it up. Being real cautious about this, or real cagey about this yes or no question. Yeah, yeah, I just want to know, do you open the book or not? No, no, I won't open it. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen, especially if it's in front um, of Marsha. You... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about like once you get out, because it feels weird when you pick it up. And we can actually give me an eavesdrop test, uh, too, real quick. I think I can get you to... custom made hand grenade that they hit in mind. <laughs> it's just gonna explode. <laughs> you open the book, she runs out. The power crash compels you, it explodes. Um, you hear jingling from inside the book. I'm gonna open it. Some but of the pages have the been front out. covers. Oh, well, I mean, when you open it, the pages have been covered out. And there's a, a, a sack of coin in there with about 10 gold in there. Mm. And, uh, okay. Going on the next week. Okay. If you have uh, four or less... Um, if you have four or more corruption, gain a chaos rank. Which I think is only Rutherford for pretending to be a priest. <laughs> Genius. Genius. Um, XP. Uh, we have 100 for showing up. Uh, 15 for... Um, which I will write the clue later. It wasn't quite turning into a lead because it's, it's a clue to a different mystery. Um, kind of are there clues of different leads? Um, so 15 for a clue, and then let's do our alignment. Start with Nash because yours has just started. Your alignments are heroism and martyrdom. Think we got that this time? Yeah, I tried. Well, do you, do you think you uh, got it? Well, obviously, no. <laughs> That's why I said I tried. If I, yeah, okay. if I said yeah, I but... did it, I would be a different argument. But nobody got into yep. danger. Gotcha. I okay. Reverse that. Yeah, nobody I cared time. about got into danger. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, give your... Uh, take just the 115. Uh, uh, definitely, because I kind of um, was kind of doing diplomacy with uh, Elja, uh, trying to to settle a score with her. Like I'll, I'll look away, kind of also being hypocritical too, because she's kind of looking away from the fact that she's doing something illegal, but at the same time also getting Elijah's trust by helping her out to save her mother. So that's kind of both. Yeah, I I agree. Um, Joe, Bergens. I should probably get 90 points for it. Yeah, get 25 for your uh, <laughs> both your pride and your... <laughs> I, I literally got up to do something and I came back and I just heard Joe say, yes, I do know everything. Don't die. <laughs> Well, I'm right, Arna. <laughs> you totally are right. Thank you for reminding me that I know everything. That really, uh, that really saved my bacon there. You guys are gonna rue the day when I get back to town. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be like, what the fuck just happened here? I'm in charge of the fucking town. I'm like this cult leader. God, it would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be so um, funny. Uh, yeah, so we will we will talk about um, uh, our plan next time.
and figure out what we're going to do about this. And hopefully, because we've had a couple of less action-packed sessions, we have a good action session next time. We will see. I bet it's going to be really action-y. Yep. That'll be fair. Okay. There's been a lot of action scenes that have just been talked down in the past, so. Yeah. That guy is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I found a knife. <laughs> oh, like at the moment that Rasmussen dies, you just snap off his peg leg and use it as a weapon. I was going to say, Rasmussen, give me your leg so I can throw it up the stairs and try and scare whatever's up there right at the beginning. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> I just imagine Nash being annoyed, like, who the fuck threw that? <laughs> To be fair, I expected, even if you guys knew I was a player, it's an ogre, shoot! Well, I mean, I figured that, I don't know, Genevieve was just kind of like wigging out, like, oh my god, an ogre, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I was tempted to throw it to, like, make herself throw herself at him, be like, be like, what are you? Tell me everything about you. <laughs> just cling to him. <laughs> I mean, at the same like time, my people. Like, like a weird fan girl. I mean, at the same time, a child says, "Hey, there's an ogre that's going to eat people out of the river." Ah, you go back to that ogre and you tell him. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I swear to God, if that child had come back to me, I would have killed him. <laughs> Don't kill that child. It was just curious. So, yeah, just... but why would you send a child? This is a grim, dark fantasy world. A child says, "There's a monster down there," and you're like, "You go back to that monster and." <laughs> You go back to that monster, you break that monster. You literally just left your house where a body was murdered, walked to a hut with another dead body. This is nothing but death and murder. We have a death pit where we throw the bodies. <laughs> You're like, you walk back to that monster and you tell him, I swear to God, I was like, man, I do have a dagger on me. I could silently kill this kid. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, some of us has to lighten, lighten up the mood of this terrible, horrible situation that is happening in this town. It just happens that you're the one that's responsible for these people's safety. <laughs> you gotta lighten the mood by getting them murdered. You know, this kid's probably not going to get murdered by the, the civil war like, going on in town, so I better find a Genevieve, different way. Genevieve has blind faith in people, as you just clearly witnessed. <laughs> She trusts Houston and Rutherford for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> and she likes Nash just because he's an ogre. That's literally the reason why she likes him. She's like, you're an ogre, I like you. It's just done. <laughs> blind faith. Blind faith. <laughs> well, that's a good thing that we fed the black on that kid. Because again, I was going to kill him if you sent him back to me. <laughs> In my head, I was just thinking of that scene from Breaking Bad, you know, with the train and everything. Oh my god. Oh, man. Uh, anyways, uh, nice seeing you guys. Hopefully, we'll get to play next week. Um, I know things are going to be a little crazy for you, Fluff, probably for the next few weeks. I don't know. So. We'll see. We'll see how yeah. things go. Um, just keep us up to date. I think, um, yeah, d depending on how bad things are, we might have to carry on without you for a few weeks. But That's I hope fine. That's cool. <laughs> are you in one of the hot spots? Um, as far as I know, no. We quarantined like a couple of our patients just to make sure. But what? Uh, and then we might get some patients from the hospital. So I really don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah, as far as I know, nobody's every two of our patients that have been quarantined have been like cleared. But the other two, we still have no idea if they're like we haven't gotten results yet. So who knows? I, I really don't know hard to say and then you there's also the risk of like somebody coming in because you know some people have two jobs where they work in one hospital and then they work where I work so you never know if they could bring it with them like without even knowing because you could be asymptomatic so you, 
it's just like a huge gamble. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful gamble. <laughs> so yeah, fun times at work. <laughs> where we're just kind of just sitting there thinking what's going to happen. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, everyone was being quiet, so I didn't know what to say. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, there isn't really much to say. It, it, it's just how it is. It's kind of how I view it. I mean, it. I already knew our healthcare system was crap. This just kind of exposes it, you know, to everybody who doesn't, who doesn't work in the field. Uh, it, it's just how it is, and when you work in healthcare, it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run into the risk of getting something or getting sick or something, you know. I mean, I just so, think that comes with the territory with dealing with sick people. And what's fun is that I'm a respiratory therapist. I'm oh. the person that people want to work right now because we manage ventilators. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, so um... they're they're hiring they're hiring us like crazy everywhere like before it was hard to get work unless you knew a couple people now it like it feels like it doesn't matter like everybody's grabbing body 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 like we need somebody to manage patients it's it's insane it's insane my um my father-in-law is a doctor in new york city or not my father-in-law my closely related in that way it's my brother-in-law's dad but um he's in he's in uh new york city he's a doctor and he just lives in the hospital because he he got coronavirus so he just can't leave so they just put him in the in the ward with the patients and he's just taking care of the patients there like can't leave it's just... yeah i know um i mean that kind of if he doesn't get real sick i mean it's it's less people sick if he's taking care of it. If, I mean, kind of understand what I'm yeah. trying to say. Yeah, but like, it's just like, oh, you tested positive. Guess you're just staying in the Corona ward now. Uh, yeah. Well, what will suck is if he ends up needing like oxygen and and treatments and stuff like that because that's also even though he's like a doctor and taking care of other patients, he also needs to take care of himself and he's also taking equipment from a patient because he needs it himself. It's just all fucked up mess. It's all fucked yeah. up mess. It's all fucked up. Yeah. Luckily, I don't think he has symptoms. I think he just tested positive. Yeah. So anyways, um, that's really great uh, conversation. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a good week. Yeah. You, sure. you too. Stay safe, healthy. <laughs> don't die. Don't die. I'll try. <laughs> Man, that's all my plans. <laughs> okay.